Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of my RTS game series. We'll be making this game inside of Unreal Engine 5 and C++. In this episode, we'll be creating the camera controller. The features we'll be implementing in this video include movement, zoom, rotation, and edge scrolling. So here I have a completely blank project in UE 5.6. First, we'll create input actions and an input mapping context. The movement action will receive vector 2D as input, the zoom action as float, the rotate hold action to the default move, and the rotate action as a float. Now, in the input mapping context, we'll assign the input keys to the respective input actions. We'll add a hold trigger to the rotate hold action and configure it as follows. Next up, we'll make a C++ spawn class. Now, in the header files, we'll add some class declarations. In the source file, we'll add headers for those classes. Next up, we'll create and initialize a few components. In the Spring Amp component, enable camera lag and fine tune the camera lag speed to adjust the smoothness of movement. Next up, let's initialize the input. Okay, so we can now finally begin working on movement. We'll define movement speed and an input action. Now, in the setup layer input component function, we'll bind the move function to the input action. In the move function, we'll simply get the movement input, convert it into a usable vector, and then simply call floating point movement to add the input vector. Now let's compile our code and uh... So it turns out that we totally forgot to add enhanced input to the module. In the editor, we'll create a blueprint deriving from the player camera class and assign input references. Let's also create a game mode base and assign it in world settings. Now hit play and we can see that movement is working perfectly as expected. 
in the traditional method of implementing Zoom, we would set the camera position in the input callback function. This, however, snaps the camera to its new location, and the result is jarring. To implement a smoother transition, we'll set the camera target in the callback function and trace the target in a function that is called every frame. To begin with, we'll define a few variables and an input action. We'll bind the zoom function to its input action. Now in the zoom function, we'll calculate the camera distance target and not the camera distance. In the calculate camera transform function, we'll use interpolation to calculate the camera distance. Spring arms target arm length would be camera distance times cos 45 degrees. Similarly, the socket offset dot z would be camera distance times sine 45 degrees. To simplify, I have replaced sine 45 and cos 45 as 0 0.707. Finally, we set the camera's pitch to negative 45 degrees. Make sure to call the function in begin play and in tick. In the player camera blueprint, we'll assign zoom action and hit play. As you can see, camera zoom is working just fine, but it is boring. To make it more dynamic, we'll change the camera angle. In a header file, let's define camera angle. In the calculate camera transform function, we'll use the camera distance to calculate the angle. Then in target arm length, we'll use the cosine component and in socket offset, we'll use the sine component. Also, we'll set the camera's pitch to camera angle times negative 1 since we are looking downward. As you can see, the camera angle changes with the distance of camera from its point of focus. When the player holds right click, we want to hide the cursor. Not only that, but it should also stay at its position. So when rotation starts, we'll lock and hide the cursor. And when rotation ends, we'll unlock and unhide it. The implementation for this is rather simple. The intimidating part of the code you see is only for cursor. When we hit play, you can see that rotation works completely fine, but we've got one problem. The character does not align with the camera rotation. To fix this issue, enable use controller rotation here in the constructor. Now let's implement doom scrolling. I mean, it's scrolling.
every single frame we check if the cursor is near to the screen boundaries. If it is, then we simply move the camera in that direction. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like, share and subscribe. Also comment on what you would like to see next.